maybe to get this service started. I want to welcome you to our awards chapel. This is a great time every year for us to stop and to recognize what God's done in all of our lives. Uh, and then there are some awards set up and uh, we have individual recipients of each of those. And so we get to celebrate what God's done in individual lives as well. Really, this, uh, this whole chapel is not set out to make much of people, but really it is set up to make much of God, celebrate God, and acknowledge what He's accomplished in the lives of people. And so that's what we're going to do. I'd love to pray with you, and then Dr. Peacock will come and lead us in our first hymn. Father, thank you for this day that's been set aside on our calendar every year for as long as I know. To thank you for your goodness to our school. Your goodness is evidenced in so many ways. One of those ways is in what we see happening in the lives of our students. Now, those who are going to receive awards today simply represent a stellar student body that you continue to gather here in this place at this time to prepare for ministry in Canada and around the world. Thank you uh, for the compelling purpose we have to train God called men and women for 21st century leadership in tough places and for every year giving us the wisdom and the capacity to pursue that purpose. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Take your hymn book, please. We're in number 544, Redeemed How I Love to Proclaim It. Let's stand with me as we sing. We'll sing all four verses. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language so I rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer, I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent, his love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. I know I shall see in His beauty the King in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. Thank you. You may be seated. As a school, we celebrate learning every day every time a light comes on and you uh, and you learn something new that you didn't uh, know before you understand it uh, differently then uh, that's something to celebrate we also today are going to uh, celebrate a, our, a particular group of people who've just really excelled in learning over the course of uh, this past year and uh, that uh, which amounts to our dean's list the dean's list is made up of uh, those students in both the seminary and the college 
who have uh, been enrolled in a, a f enrolled full time, a uh, minimum of 10 credit hours, who have a grade point average of at least 3.5 in uh, the fall semester, uh, the most recent semester to have been completed. So the, the recipients or the, those who are on the dean's list in the college uh, this year are Andrew Davis, Katrina Granger, and Patrick Henry. Could you, uh, college uh, recipients in the dean's list, could you come forward right now? We have a certificate for you. Our dean's list in the seminary includes Amy Bott, David Hansen, Matthew Burks, Clint Langelar, and Andy Menjivar. Could, could you uh, five scholars come forward as well, please? Uh, the Delta Epsilon Chi Honor Society Award is uh, awarded by our accreditors, the uh, Association of Biblical Higher Education, each year uh, to a person nominated by the faculty at the beginning of the final semester before, their, before graduation. And uh, it includes uh, both scholastic and honorary members. Nominees must exhibit Christian character and leadership ability and must have acu uh, achieved a cumulative grade point average of at least 3.3 or its equivalent. And uh, this year it's, it's an award that amounts to uh, a gift as well as a certificate. And this year's recipient of the De Delta Epsilon Chi Honor Society Award is Russell Falk. So Russell, could you come forward? The Cunningham Christian Service Award is an award that uh, memorializes in the, the memory of John and Isabel Cunningham, who were the pastor and wife of Cambrian Heights Baptist Church in Calgary for many years and leaders in, in a significant part of our uh, family of churches for a long time. And it is uh, given annually to a seminary graduate who, who is in their last year uh, and who, qualify, who uh, exhibits the, uh, an example in their seminary and church life of the principles of character and service that we uh, remember in the lives of John and uh, John Cunningham and his wife. Uh, they, um, and this year's, it, it amounts to a, a cash gift as well as having your name on a plaque that will be displayed for uh, for all posterity here in the seminary. Uh, this year's recipient of the Cunningham Christian Service Award is Emily Buck. Emily? Thank you. Uh, 
the Mountain View Academic Merit Award was uh, instituted by the members of uh, the Mountain View Christian Fellowship and uh, is, is, has the purpose of rewarding academic excellence and diligence and to provide incentive for Canadian students to enroll in the seminary. And so it's awarded annually uh, in the spring term to a Canadian citizen who's enrolled as a full-time student in a graduate program, Master of Divinity or, or one of the Master of Christian Ministry degrees um, or the Master of Biblical Studies, uh, but who also has the highest grade point average in the previous fall term. They must have completed 18 credit hours of coursework to be eligible for the awards, so it uh, eliminates first-year students as a part of it, but they must have maintained a cumulative grade point average of at least 3.0 over the minimum of 18 uh, credit hours of coursework. So this year's recipient of the Mountain View Academic Merit Award is Tamara Mitten. Tamara, could you come to us? The hymn is number 62, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. So turn there in your hymn book, please. Stand with me as we sing all three stanzas. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy? Who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, Cheers waste winding path I tread, Gives me grace for every trial, Feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter, and my soul a thirst may be gushing from the rock before me lo a spring of joy i see gushing from the rock before me lo a spring of joy i see all the way my savior leads me for oh, the fullness of his love, perfect rest that he has promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit clothed immortal wings its flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. Thank you. You may be seated. The Zondervan Greek Award is given each year to the first year student in Greek who uh, displays the highest academic achievement in the class. I told this class a few weeks ago that this awards chapel was coming and that deciding who this recipient is, is has been a great challenge. The main reason is because we have a class full of students who are doing very, very well. So. It came down to the wire, but the recipient for this year's 
Zondervan Greek Award is Tamara Mitten. Let me say that you all know that uh, Zondervan uh, is giving a gift to Tamara. She has her choice of a number of books. And I'll say if you, if you just like some counsel, I might be available to do that if you, if, you, if you don't know which one to choose. And in addition, her name is going to be added to this plaque, which will be here for all the years to come. So congratulations, Tamara. I have the privilege of presenting the final three awards. Uh, the Jesse Morales Evangelism Award was established after the passing away of Jesse Morales, who was a beloved pastor, church planter uh, in our Canadian National Baptist Convention. Uh, one of the most passionate men for Christ that I knew, uh, one of the most selfless men I knew, um, and as a way to honor him, his family and his friends uh, set up an award that would acknowledge each year uh, a student who would seem to demonstrate that same heart for evangelism. Uh, it is awarded preferably to a graduating student and it, is a, it has a cash award uh, component as well as, like all others, your name will go on a plaque that Lord willing will be here until he returns. This year's recipient of the Jesse Morales Evangelism Award is Shauna Dolan. Through the history of our school, we've enjoyed a partnership with the three major agencies of the Southern Baptist Convention in one form or another. Uh, there is a consistency through the history uh, and the interweaving history of our school. Uh, there's Lifeway Christian Resources as one of those agencies. Every year, uh, they ask for me in conjunction with the faculty to decide on a recipient for what they call the Lifeway Pastoral Ministry Award. One of the key descriptors of this award is that it has to be a Master's of Divinity student who is scheduled to graduate this year and is clearly called to pastoral ministry. Uh, this year's recipient is Hansung Kim. should mention that Lifeway uh, is every year is gracious to send a beautiful leather-bound minister's Bible as well as a gift card that can be used for the purchasing or ideally in their mind the initial setting up of a pastor's library and so uh, they they're very gracious to us the final award is the Blackaby Spiritual Leadership Award this also comes with a cash award as well as a name that will be engraved on a plaque and one for the recipient to keep this was set up by the Blackaby family, primarily my uncle Henry and Marilyn Blackaby, who, who invested in theological education long before there was a, a seminary or a college, uh, teaching out of the basement of the church my uncle pastored in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. His son Richard became the second president of our school and was here as president for 13 years. And so it's from Richard and Lisa as well. Uh, this is... Uh, an award that's chosen by the president, but also, as with most uh, awards, I like to do that in conjunction with the faculty. And so uh, 
there are two things that are desired. One of them is that this person would exhibit in their life uh, the principles that are taught in spiritual leadership, the book that was penned by both my uncle and Richard, as well as uh, just a clear evidence in their local church life that they are leaders and God is using them to lead. Uh, so this year's recipient of the Blackaby Spiritual Leadership Award is Daniel Spalesi. I don't think the battery's working. Is this on? We're live feed? Good. I've, I've been thinking quite a bit about what I might want to say at, the, at an awards chapel. You know, in a lot of ways, an awards chapel is a time that we recognize, uh, as has been mentioned a few times already, just the outstanding performance of students, the dedication of students, the characteristics of students. And in a seminary, in a college, it, it may be easy to assume that once you have all the things that you, quote, need to know, you're ready for ministry. And, and I would just tell you, I hope it's not a bait and a switch, that you paid all this tuition and you're not ready for ministry if you just know certain things. Um, you need to know the God that you serve. You need to love him with all your heart. You need to love his word and love his people. If you can do that, then what you learn in class complements what God's doing in your life. He uses that and adds texture to your life and, and uh, builds some skills into your life that will be useful in ministry. But, um, but if you think that having come here and you've got a degree, you're ready, I would say that you will learn quickly you're mistaken. Along that line, uh, there's a couple of verses that God's used literally my entire life. Woven it through my life as a constant reminder of this very reality, and that's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. These are my mother's favorite verses. It's hard for me to remember receiving a card or a letter that wasn't signed, Love Mom, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. In the old translation, the King James Version, this is how it goes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. We have a guest professor coming in a matter of weeks, Dwayne Garrett, one of the founding members of the faculty of this school years and years ago. The banner that he places over these verses is intellectual humility. Intellectual humility. We're not anti-intellectual, but we don't think that intellectualism is everything either. We're talking about a disposition of life. If you have your Bibles and would turn with me to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, I want to read it to you again, this time out of the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own understanding. Think about Him in all your ways, and He'll guide you on the right paths. I want to take about 15 minutes and walk through every single one of those lines. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in Him. When I think of that word, I think of complete abandon. There's no plan B. There's no backup plan. There's no contingency plan. I am literally, one, one commentator said, you are risking it all 
you are risking your life for God's wisdom and God's plans. A lot of us will come into ministry and say, well, uh, if God doesn't come through, then I promise you a lot of times you're going to live out of a then. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. I often think of this word trust in terms of me as a little kid learning how to swim. The way our family did it was dad taught all four of us how to swim. He'd get in the water, typically on summer vacation, as we didn't have a pool at the house, and he would stand about chest deep, and he'd hold his arms up, and he'd say, jump, Robert, jump. And I don't know why I wouldn't do it. I mean, it was as if my toes grew five or six inches and just clamped onto the edge of that pool. Like, I wanted to jump. You been there? I wanted to jump. I wanted to get in the water. I, I, did I think my dad was suddenly going to slap me into the water and go, Ta, you know, no, he wasn't that way. He'd never, he'd never given me any reason to doubt him. He'd caught me several times before. My dad was a great swimmer. I remember watching him. He just would love to, we'd go to the lake uh, in Penticton, and uh, he would go for miles of, of swimming. He just loved to swim. So he was a swimmer. So why wouldn't I jump? Sometimes I feel that way in my walk with Christ. He's beckoning me. It's not a question of ability. I just would prefer the poolside to jumping midair. Here's the thing, and I hope I'm not raining on anybody's parade, but if you're going to be a servant of King Jesus Christ, he will not just once, not twice, but repeatedly put you in a position where you will have to choose whether you trust him or not. He will just do it. And the next one will seem bigger than the last one. Or at least the details will be distinct. He will give you over and over and over in your life another opportunity to trust Him. If you can receive challenges that way, I think it will change the way you look at ministry. I wish I could tell you, well, until you get to be the president of a seminary, then the problems stop. No, no. No, no. We say we're training leaders for tough places. It means we're all living in tough places. And every, every, every time God gives or allows a struggle or a, a challenge to enter your life, it's another opportunity to trust Him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That, that word, all your heart, is meaningful to me, too, because somehow there is in that. Is it even possible to trust God with half your heart? Is it even possible to be half-hearted about your Christian journey? It feels to me that there's a lot of Christian, feels to me like there's a lot of Christian leaders who are, in fact, trying to be half-hearted, and it's frustrating. Now you've got to love them with all your heart. The commentator G.R. Driver argues, that this word trust is more than just what I described a moment ago. That in fact this word trust is a Hebrew word where the original idea is lying helplessly face forward before the Lord. With all your heart. Emphatic trust. Who or what you trust will determine everything else about your life and the ministry to which God has called you. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Do you trust Him? For many, if not all of us, there are at least a circumstance. For some of us, there are multiple circumstances. Right now, simultaneous, where He's saying to you, will you trust me? Will you? You don't get to have a plan B. And don't rely on your own understanding. 
You know, there's some other Proverbs that speak to this, and I'm just going to run down my short list of the ones that are meaningful to me. Proverbs 5.21 says, For a man's ways are in full view of the Lord, and he examines all his paths. Proverbs 14.12 and Proverbs 16.25 says, There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Proverbs 16.2, Proverbs 21.2, they sound very similar. Uh, all a man's ways seem innocent to him, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Or all a, ways, all a man's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs the heart. Proverbs 16.9, in his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Proverbs 19.21, many are the plans of a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Don't rely on your own understanding. You know, in the original version, lean not on your own understanding. It, it, this word lean, rely, it doesn't re really mean incline yourself toward it. What it really means is that you, you don't want to support yourself with your own understanding. You don't want to support your approach to life based on your own understanding. The older I get, the more I realize how frail I am, how limited I am. I feel it physically. I feel it intellectually. I feel it emotionally. The older I get, the more I realize I am, I am a frail creature of dust, saved by only the grace of Jesus Christ and Him alone. And apart from Him, I can do nothing. It's not easy, though, for some reason, to turn away from my own understanding. That's the devilish thing. Is I know that I shouldn't be relying or supporting myself with my own understanding, but I continue to go back down that route and do it anyway. We say things like, figure it out. I'll figure it out. But I'm telling you, in ministry, we're going to be asked to get involved in things that we just flat cannot figure out. Have you sat there with somebody and you're scratching your head and you think, God, I have no idea based on human wisdom what to tell this person. Would you intervene? Would you open your word? Would you do something miraculous and bring life to this person? Don't lean on your own understanding. My understanding will yield my best thinking. And my best thinking will yield my best end results. And nobody needs my best. Not this school and not the people in our ministry setting. They don't need my best. They need God's best. It's what sets the people of God apart. Is that we don't try to come up with the world's best wisdom. We've got God's wisdom. Let's not lean on our own understanding. Think about him in all your ways. This is quite different than the original, in all your ways acknowledge him. It's almost like when I was in high school, I don't know if they still do it, I think so, looking at my 14-year-old son. But in high school, you know, as you're walking by each other in the hall, guys wouldn't say hi, they'd just do this thing here. You know, and if you're the giver, it's up, and if you're the recipient, it's... <laughs> That's how we do life. Wake up in the morning, hey God, here's... Here's yours. And we're expecting God to go. That's not what this verse means. It's not giving a nod to God. Acknowledge Him. I've seen a lot of that even in the news these days. People giving a shout out to God. That's not what this verse means. I think the Christian homeless standard gets it. You think about Him all day long. It's not just acknowledging, it is the much richer content of being aware. It, it, it is having fellowship with, it's thinking about him. When we were, when I was a teenager, I was given charge over teaching the young kids in our church. And one of the songs we, it was an action song, won't repeat the actions, but it was, uh, I must have Jesus in my whole life, in my whole, uh, uh, I must have Jesus all day long. In my walking, in my talking, in my sleeping, in my waking, I must have Jesus in my life. That's more what he's getting at. 
What do you spend your time thinking about? Seriously. If you were to say, God, could you rewind the last 24 hours of my life? What did you spend the majority of your time thinking about? Okay, if we could get food out of the picture, and if we could get fatigue out of the picture, what did you spend most of your time thinking about? I think, can I just be really honest? Churches are dying for thinking pastors. People who will make room in their life to think. You know, thinking is work. Thinking is doing something. Thinking is shutting off the clamor around us and saying, God, I just want to meditate on your word. I want to meditate on who you are and what you're doing around me. I want to unplug, find a, the discipline of silence, find the discipline of seclusion, find the discipline of loneliness, and to just think. One of my dad's statements, we call them dadisms, is uh, he would say to young men that he was training for years, decades, he would say over and over again, guys, you are what you think about all day long. You are what you think about all day long. You, you will become that thing you think about most. So what is it? Think about him in all your ways. And he will guide you on the right paths. The old version says he's going to lead you. Here's the promise. He's going to keep you in step with him. Isaiah 30, 21 says, you'll hear a voice behind you, if you want to go left or right, saying, this is the way, walk in it. He's going to cause you to experience him in new and vibrant and textured ways with every single day that you journey with him. If you haven't heard it for a while, let me read to you Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I lack. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you're with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You're guarding and you're guiding all the way. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. The path that we walk is marked out by him. And the power to walk is a gift from him. The path that we walk is marked out by him. And the power to walk is a gift from him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And don't rely on your own understanding. Think about him in all your ways. And he'll guide you in the right path. If you can come out of this place with that commitment, you've yet to see what God will do in your life. Let's pray together. Father, we uh, acknowledge that you repeatedly give us opportunities to trust you. You don't ask us first. You don't negotiate it with us. You simply introduce into our lives opportunities to fall face first toward you and to cry out you are all we have you're all we need we have no plan B we have no backup plan it's all forward with you as you examine our hearts God if there is something in us that is holding us back 
This is a morning we ask you to break it free. We could say with integrity, we trust you with all our heart. We're not going to lean on our own understanding. We're not going to rely on our own understanding. We're going to think about you in all of our ways. And then, Father, we're going to believe and trust and then experience you leading us in the right paths. It's for your glory and the good of your people, we pray. And in Jesus Christ's name, amen. The hymn is number 338. Will you take your hymn book, please, and stand with me as we sing How Firm a Foundation, Ye Saints of the Lord, is laid for your, re- your faith in His excellent word. We'll pause after every verse, and I'll give the directions from there. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can ye say than to you he hath said to you who for refuge to Jesus hath fled? Let us read the next verse together and let's ponder over the words we are about to sing. Will you read with me? Fear not, I am with thee. Oh, be not dismayed. For I am thy God and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand. Upheld by thy righteous, omnipotent hand. Sing with me. Fear not, I am with thee. Oh, be not dismayed. For I am thy God, and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand. Upheld by my righteous, omnipotent hand. Let us read the next verse. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, My grace all-sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee. I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. Verse 3, sing with me. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all-sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. Final verse, let's read it together. The soul that on Jesus hath leaned for repose, I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul, though all hell should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. Sing with me. The soul that on Jesus hath leaned for repose, I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul, though all hell should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. Thank you. Let's remain standing as we dismiss. We've intentionally built into this service some time for you to get pictures, especially if you want one with one of these plaques that are going to go back up on a wall. Uh, You may want to come and and get a picture taken or group pictures or what have you. And so we'll do that right after we dismiss. Let's bow. God, would you bless and keep this gathering of people? Would you cause your face to shine upon us and be gracious toward us? We pray that you'd give us peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.